inside a magnet, you have functional magnetic resonance imaging, and they're doing screw tasks. As I said. And similar sorts of things, doing memory tests, all kinds of things. Um, likewise, in cognitive science, psychology is a key partner. Uh, we provide the empirical methods and, and the findings for informing the efforts of our partner disciplines in that area machine intelligence, philosophy, linguistics. I myself, and I'm just, just one, have had a lot to do over the years with a, a, one of the leading uh, people who does machine learning in machines. And they come to us, this is Rich Sutton, mm -hmm. who, and asking Jim, how do animals do this? We know they're field tested, at, field tested systems, and they're millions, and they work, they live, they thrive. Um, how do they, what's the learning look like? And then they try to emulate that, they figure, well, that must be, a, you know, uh, variation national selections select out these systems. So tell us how the animal or the person learns, and then that'll help us design better robots. Because they trying to program things from theory, sheer thought experiments has not worked. And the, and the best people are now looking at psychologists to tell us how the biological, the carbon-based system, and the silicon-based system work. Now outside science, with, however we want to construe that, the methods and findings of psychologists are being progressively adopted uh, as a source of reliable, evidence-based principles for answering questions of importance. So let me give you a few examples. The studies of decision making led to Danny Kahneman's work on heuristics, which led to, which has led to open up a whole area of behavioral economics and produced a Nobel Prize. Uh, that's decision making. Uh, studies of episodic memory have led to Loftus's work on eyewitness memory, and that's affecting the legal system and changing how they think about eyewitness testimony and hopefully constructive ways. And some of you know this school, Richard Kemp, is now working uh, with a number of agencies on how to improve uh, identification of people uh, in airports and things like that. Studies of short-term memory some, uh, are beginning to revolutionize how teaching and instruction is done, particularly at the beginning levels. Uh, Tim, my PhD student, works in that. And it's to take into account the limited <coughs> capacity of short-term memory. Likewise, those you mentioned, clinical site, the studies of classical conditioning in animals and also cognitive framing in humans has, has been key factors in developing of cognitive behavioral therapy, which is now the, one of the key methods and one of the best substantiated, validated methods for treatment of all kinds of disorders. Do we have any clinical masters in here? No. Okay. okay. Oh, there you go. Hello. The, um, just, and finally, uh, and I could go on, but anyway, studies in social psych on persuasion have led to somewhat alarming insights on how easy it is to get us, to, human beings, to comply with all sorts of things just by getting them to say yes to, can you give, oh, can you ask, can I ask you a favor? And if you get the person to say yes, the chances of complying go straight up. There's all kinds of, yeah, kill, see all the enemies? Kill, I can never say the word. You can say, can I do a Joe on persuasion? Cialdini. Cialdini, thank you. No, thank you. Yeah. So, and so those are just some of these ideas. I bet all of you, hopefully, um, I'm not going to ask another question, <laughs> um, can think of other reliable findings that are having, that are so reliable that they're now, we feel, we feel confident and the public feels confident. We can go to court, we can go to the eight, uh, various equal, uh, other people and say, well, here's what we, here's what we can do. We can, pretty, we can tell you. Oh, with you know, some error margin, uh, <coughs> what the likelihoods are if you do this in a certain way. So ha um, oddly enough, as, as these methods on the other side of the equation, as these scientific methods have uh, have developed and spread among psychology, it's been interesting, uh, over the last, particularly over the last 20 years, how the isms and the cults of personalities have disappeared. When I was first here, and first a graduate student in the 70s, you know, people were talking, Oh, I'm Freudian, or I'm a Jungian, or I'm a Skinnerian, or I'm a behaviorist, or I'm a cognitivist. As far as I know, that's well, as, as, as we gain confidence in our own skills and our methods, uh, that's disappearing. And it's being replaced by the sort of thing probably hopefully all you do is you um, you talk about what area you what research you're doing, what area you're in, and then you have a debate. Um, it's about the exact method and what the meaning of the data is and what the proper and whether you know you're testing the theory well. Um, so, so in conclusion, uh, contemporary psychologists are trained in empirical methods of inquiry. These methods have yielded reliable systematic regularities. The findings have provided fundamental insights into the functioning of humans and animals, and have provided practical guidance in practical areas. 
Um, some people wish to deny that it's not called that science and on that and discount our achievements. Well, you, you're not, but anyway, that's their loss. <laughs> uh, the label doesn't matter. And what's in a name that would be called a rose by under, any other name we spell just as sweet? <laughs> One thing that I want to pick up about your talks, Kathy, was you're talking about how psychology, I mean, unlike, um, I mean, disciplines like physics don't have, uh, I mean, so many of these sort of grand theories. I, I wonder if, uh, I mean, one of the reasons why that might be the case is because, um, I mean, every, everyday people have a lot of folk psychology about how um, people think and what and what they do. I mean, for, for example, um, I mean that uh, that old saying, um, "Birds of a feather flock together," but uh, I mean the contrary saying that uh, uh, opposites attract. And I'm wondering if uh, I I think it might be the case that to some extent that psychologists might actually take uh, look at those sort of folk theories of psychology and look at ways that you could test them and extract um, what uh, what the truth is from them. Good question. Is this all going on YouTube tomorrow? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they must have some memory on that. <laughs> My battery runs out to have ten minutes.